Hello, Dr. Richards. Just call me Grace. I know I'm your boss and you're freshly employed and all. However, I consider everyone as a friend here. Everyone calls me by my name, and I don't want to put any unnecessary pressure on my staff. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll keep that in mind. But uh, I wouldn't really say I'm stressed or anything like that. I've been reviewing x-rays for about 10 years now, so I certainly know how to do my job. You know, even with sophisticated imaging measurements. By the way, why are you sitting here all alone in the dark? You're not conducting any procedures right now. You'll strain your eyes badly by staring at these screens. Oh, that's nothing. Don't worry about it. I'm used to working in the dark anyways. The brightness of these screens isn't really much of an issue, so it's really unlikely I'd do something to my eyes. So, you wanted to have a little conversation with me? You called my office number two times, not even three minutes ago. Yeah, I wanted to check if Brendan had passed you some urgent information about the recent CT scans we've conducted for the past two weeks. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Really? Richard didn't tell you that? No. Uh, of course he didn't tell you, otherwise we wouldn't be having this conversation. What, what kind of conversation? Is something going on in this department that I don't know? Grace, please, just let me explain. Uh, I, uh, I wanted to tell you, but I was just too afraid of how you would react. But here it goes, I guess. Well, the past two weeks, I've been receiving some pretty odd cases. Uh, my old job at St. Hanna Radiology Center, most of the time, if not always, I received and examined CT scans of brain abnormalities, skull traumas, and abdominal oddities. Most of the time, it was just internal bleeding cases, blood clots, phenomena, tuberculosis, and two cases of immovable lung cancer tumors. But uh, when I started working here, give me a second, let me hand the computer. Why do you need this camera? It's my tool to record evidence that might be useful in catching this children's poisoner. Children's poisoner? Yeah, but, uh, uh oh, right. Uh, and when I started working here, my first few weeks were exactly the same as my old office. Uh, let me type a few commands. There. Over the past two weeks, I've gotten these four cases, which, to be completely honest, scared the living shit out of me. Starting with Ricky Summers. Patient information, seven years old, male. Symptoms, severe abdominal pain, vomiting, fever, and muscular pain. And his symptoms have gotten much worse about a week after eating at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. I, I guess you've heard of that restaurant? Yeah, I know that place. An infamous restaurant built as a response to Bond's Burgers with the same urban legends about disappearing people as its spiritual predecessor. What about it? Do you assume that child got sick right after eating in there? I'll get to that later. So uh, after witnessing such symptoms, you'd probably just assume that it was some severe food poisoning or an extreme case of the flu. Yeah, those are typical symptoms of a severe flu or complex food poisoning for that matter. Right, my thoughts exactly. But every poisoning test, and even the viral blood test, showed negative results. And that was until I decided to give him a proper abdominal CT scan. Take a look at this. What the fuck? mouth, but Jesus, what the hell is this? That is cystic echinococcus. Cystic echinococcus? H how? In, in this region? How'd that thing get so big? These little tapeworm bastards tend to develop really fast and almost undetected. When they do decide to finally show up, most of the time it's just too late. The balloon pops and the whole abdominal cavity gets infected. And then you die. Well, uh, congratulations on your accurate diagnosis then, uh, I'm not finished yet, Grace. I wouldn't call you and disturb your inner peace if it was just a single case of cystic echinococcus. But it's alarming seeing such a case repeat itself another three times throughout the next two weeks. Every test showed the same symptoms, same images, pretty much the same diagnosis. Except for one, which we'll get to later at the end. See? Larry Sandman, eight years old. Little man. You 
you see this? <laughs> as big as Demi's ego's fist. But here's an even more interesting thing. All these kids didn't have any contact with infected animal feces. Hell, it's even impossible to catch such a parasitic disease here. There's no bears, foxes, badgers, or any wild animal for that matter. So I and my fellow pediatrician, Dr. Goodman, initiated a little investigation and started asking the parents what the hell happened and what they suspect could have caused such an illness. And every single parent admitted that just before the incidents, they had all went to the same Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Now the real question is, how in the hell would they all catch the same illness? And especially from classic cheese pizzas because we got their order bills in our hands to see what they had for dinner. Turns out, some sick fuck roams around there and adds God knows what shit into the pizzas with motherfucking tapeworm eggs in it. Oh my god. But the worst of all of these is the case of Sadie Preacher, who was six years old. Symptoms are unbearable headaches, vomiting, dizziness, and progressive loss of consciousness. I decided that she needed a CT scan right away and braced herself. that lunatic not only had some spare hydatid worm eggs, but pork tapeworm ones as well. <gasps> Leo, these poor children. Well, why hasn't there been a report on this? Brennan was going to tell you that, that he either forgot about it or just got too scared. But uh, when it comes to Sadie, she, uh, she died holding her mother's hand while being rushed to the emergency surgical department. That's why I've decided to record this as footage to bring it to the local police station as evidence. I and Brendan have already collected all the necessary information. Hello. You there? Come in. I've been looking for you for ages. Another urgency. Patient, age 7, in from ER in less than two minutes. What's going on? Does anyone care to explain to me? We've got the fifth case of that poisoning thing. Bullshit. Keep the x-ray lamp, for God's sake. Okay, all right. Grace, you get to see with your own eyes what kind of bizarre shit goes on here. You stay here and watch. My God, okay. Hope it's not what I think it is. Bring and connect a heart monitor and a ventilator since the patient is on heart anesthetics now. Okay, just give me a moment. Hey, don't let that kid's mother in here. It's a restricted area. I don't care. She'll deserve the procedure. This guy. is ready. We can start the procedure. So is the machine. Let's start with the head section, and we'll move slowly towards the abdomen. Right. Give me the patient information. Eric Harley, seven years old. Symptoms according to his mother are dizziness, extreme abdominal pain, blood and bile vomiting, lack of appetite, diarrhea, and loss of energy. Progressively worsening throughout this week. The teacher caught him vomiting gallons of blood and bile in class today. All right, don't let the basic info. Let's start with the whole body scan. I wonder what it's going to be this time. My bet? Another one of those tapeworm cysts. Brendan, you forgot to tell Grace about our plan. <sighs> Sorry, flew out of my mind. You know, I'm really busy recently, and I don't have enough time to actually rest. <sighs> Luckily, your friend told me everything. Good. I, that's... that's good. All right, it's done. Let's process the slices. The brain seems to be intact. No signs of abnormalities. Moving to the chest, down to the abdomen.
can't see any cysts here, especially in the liver. So that's regular poisoning then, right? Not too sure. The images aren't sharp enough. Try manipulating the image with brightness and contrast. Wait a minute. Something's off. Rescan this section and zoom out to the suspicious area. Alright, just a minute. I'll go talk to his mom. It, it moved! In this angle you can tell it's a fasciola hepatica. Hell of a thing. It's actually a full colony of damn liver flukes. No wonder this kid got a sudden bile vomiting attack. These worms are literally eating his liver out. And... Oh god. Look at the main vein! It's perforated! Liver fluke must have chewed it up and made its way into the vascular tract. And if the fluke reaches the heart? Eric will die. W what's going on? Ah, shit, he woke up. Abort the procedure! What? Eric! Eric, it's gonna be okay, buddy, alright? You're gonna be fine. What do you think anesthesiologist? I know your tummy hurts, but it'll, it'll, it'll be over soon, okay? Yeah. We're working as hard as we can. Alright? Just, just stay with me, little man, alright? It's gonna be okay. Sweetie, sweetie, don't cry. Mom will come soon. Dr. Leo will take the pain away from you. Relax. Keep still, please. Look, look, Eric. Breathe in calm, okay? I, I gave you some painkillers now. You, you should go to sleep in a minute. Piece of junk. What the shit? Second kid this week. Second. We need to report this to the authorities. We'll hold that fucking psycho and the restaurant owner accountable for this. They'll both pay for what they fucking did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Eric was already a lost cause. Liver fluke probably blocked his vessels. <laughs> Who's gonna tell his mom? I'll try, but I'm afraid I'll start crying myself. <sighs> Let's take this kid somewhere nice and prepare him for his last goodbye with his mother. Okay. Grace? Grace, come on. We have to do this. 